Wow to YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to embark on the much anticipated Synology NAS setup series. So, what we're going to do with this series of videos is pretend for a moment, suspend disbelief, if you will, and pretend that I've been tasked by a client to set up their network. I want to do it as inexpensively as possible. And I want them to have an efficient, functional network with email, web hosting, all the other plethora of things that are available uh, on a on a uh, on a network setup. All right. So what we're going to cover on this video is the setup of the Synology NAS, everything from the IP address to the DHCP server to the DNS if we need it, all that kind of stuff. So let's get started over on the Synology Flash Station. We're going to use that as our uh, network server for this uh, pretend network that we're selling to a client. All right, so we're over on the Synology Flash Station, and the first thing that we need to do is set an IP address. So you need to be thinking of an IP addressing scheme you're going to be using for your network for your client. Now, in my case, I've just, if you look up here in the upper right-hand corner right there, we get the mouse to highlight you'll see that I've set this up with an IP address of 192.168.20.1. Now, I like to start all my servers out at the beginning of my range of IP addresses, so I usually reserve addresses 1 through 24 for servers and that kind of thing, and then uh, IP addresses uh, 25 through 100 or 25 through whatever for the workstations, and then I reserve my networking gear out in the 200 or uh, 250 range somewhere out there so your mileage might vary and it'll it, you'll come to understand that better as we move along in the video so item number one is make sure you have an IP addressing scheme in mind that you want to use for your client and in my case it's a 20 subnet so what we want to do is come over here to control panel and come under network so one of the first things you're going to need to do is give it a name, and I've just called this FS-1018 uh, for the uh, for Flash Station. Uh, as you can see, our default gateway is here, but this is not where we set it. Uh, if we come up here to Network Interface, now I'm using the 10 gig networking card on this Synology NAS. Uh, otherwise, you would be editing LAN 1, which is one of the four 1 gigabit connections. So I'm just going to come here to LAN 5, and I'm going to go to Edit. And what I've done is I've just told it to use a, a manual IP address of 20.1, my subnet mask. My gateway is 20.254, and this is what I was talking about. I like to put my firewall or gateway <clears throat> or access point uh, to the Internet out at the end of my network, so therefore it's 20.254. I'm also using... Uh, Google's DNS server because we don't have an internal one set up yet. We will later, but for now, just set it up with Google. And then because I'm using a VLAN within my network to simulate this, I have a VLAN tag of 20 set. And it's important, I learned this the hard way, it's important that you make sure you set that. If you're going to change this to a different subnet than your, than your local network or your lab network is on, you need to make sure you put this in the VLAN ID in here before you click on OK, otherwise you uh, could lose connectivity on a VLAN, so keep that in mind. Now, IPv6, I turn it off. I don't use it. Just click on OK here, and then you've got that set. The other thing you'll want to do is come over to the DSM settings. Now, Synology recommends you change those two ports. You can make them to be anything you want. Don't forget what, what you change those ports to, though, because you might have a problem in the future if you change it to the wrong number or you don't remember what number you changed it to. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to leave them set at 5000 and 5001. The other thing I like to do is, is click on here and make sure you automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS. And I like to enable HTTP2. So go ahead and click on apply here, and that's going to restart the web server. Now the other thing I like to do is come up here to file services and make sure your SMB service is enabled because we're going to be using Windows workstations 
We also may be putting some uh, Linux workstations on here as well later. Give it, give the workgroup a name instead of just leaving it at workgroup. I've changed mine to lab net. You can change it to anything you want. Uh, come down here if you if you're if you're not going to have any Macintosh or Apple machines connected to your network, take that check mark off, and also make sure the check mark is not enabled on the NFS. We're not going to be using that as well. So once you've given it your, your work group a name, come down here to advanced settings. And this is very important. If you're going to be running Windows 10 workstations on here, by default, the maximum SMB protocol is set to SMB2. You want to make sure you change that to SMB3. Leave your minimum at 1 and your maximum at 3. And this will help you with uh, web browsing uh, on Windows machines. And SMB3 is much uh, faster it's uh, it's been uh, optimized uh, for for much better transfer speeds than SMB two, so make sure you change that to SMB three, and then click on apply and apply. Now the next thing I like to do is set up a DHCP server, and what a DHCP server does is it hands out IP addresses to uh, devices on your network, whether it be workstations or your tablet or your cell phone whatever you've got out there needs to have an IP address on the correct subnet for you to be able to communicate with your network and your server and your DHCP server also provides the information for the computers to get outside of your network they need to know what the gateway is to the internet they need to know the DNS server to use etc so that all that stuff works so Synology has a built-in DHCP server we're going to go ahead and turn that on so We'll come here to control panel and then come right here to DHCP server. Now, what we want to keep in mind, we're using LAN 5, as you can clearly see right here. So don't enable the DHCP server on one of these others. You want to come here to LAN 5 and click on enable DHCP server. Then what you want to do is come here and edit. Now, I've already set mine up, but I'm going to go through what I set, what my settings are. So I've enabled the DHCP server. My primary DNS is 8.8.8.8 and secondary is 4.4.4.4. And the domain name we're going to use is labnet.local. That mirrors what we've set in our workgroup settings, except we appended the local to it. And then I've set up a range of IP addresses. I've started mine from 30 through 69. Uh, and then I've also entered in here the default gateway. So what will happen is, is when a DHCP request is made by a workstation, it'll get one of these addresses within this range. It'll also get the default gateway so it knows its way out onto the internet, and it will also get the primary and secondary DNS settings. I could also come under here under Edit, and as you can see, I can set all these uh, uh, various settings up here, the starting and ending, the net mask, the gateway. And then if you need any of these other options, which we're not going to go into, these are advanced options, you have them available under the DHCP server. I'm just going to click here on cancel. Now, right now I don't have any clients. We will here shortly, but uh, right now there are no clients with IP addresses. So we'll just uh, leave that set at what it is. So we've got our DHCP server set up. Uh, we've enabled it. We've given our primary and secondary DNS and our gateway. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And as you can see, uh, the DHCP server is now active. All right, so probably the next thing we ought to do is we ought to go ahead and set up our users that we're going to allow access into Synology. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the basic setup of a user, but as these videos progress, we will have to come back and make changes to these users uh, so that we can give them permissions to other uh, applications and so forth as we move forward. But let's get our basic users set up. So we're going to, again, we're going to come back to control panel here and we're going to go to user. And we're going to go ahead and create a couple of users. I'm going to create one called uh, Jerry. Enter their name in here. You can enter their password or their email in there if you want to. We're going to leave that blank and there's a reason we're going to do that. We'll come back to email later. Uh, go ahead and give them a secure password though. But in our case, we're going to use a weak one because we're just doing a demo. Now, 
You do have the option, if you put the email in there, you can send a notification mail directly to the new newly created user. But since we're going to be running our own mail server at some point on this server, we're not going to enter that in there right now. Uh, the other thing I like to do, it's just a, 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 a thing of mine, I like to be in control of user passwords. That way they can't use <clears throat> weak ones or change them. So I disallow the user to change the account password. You can do whatever you want to. And then it, one nice little function here is you can actually generate a random password. So if you're not good at thinking up passwords for people, you could do a, a, a fairly secure password. Click on Next. We're just going to go with the default settings right here. Uh, I'm not even going to explain them. They're, they're groups, but we'll cover that in some detail later. But for now, just click on Next. Now, I already have some file shares out there. We'll come back to that in a minute, how I created those. But for now, I'm just going to ignore this. So there are two shares out there. One is called Applications. One's called Video. Right now, Jerry has no access to either one. That's fine. Click on Next. We can also set quotas on these shares. So if Jerry had access, we could limit the amount of read and write or writes he can make to that, to that share. But again, an advanced topic. We're not going to worry about it now. Just click on Next. And then... What applications do I want him to have access to? So right now we could give him access to the Disk Station Manager, to the FTP, to the File Station, Universal Search, or RSync. Again, advanced. We'll cover this later. For right now, just click on Next, Next, and Apply. And that will create the user. Now, I've already created the user called Adama. He is a system admin. And I went out, and at, the first thing you should do on your Synology is go out and create a new admin user and disable that admin account. That's best practices from Synology. So I followed that. Now I'm going to create one more account and we'll just call it Joe. And that'll be for me. All right, disallow password change, and I hope I put them in there right. And I'm just going to accept all the defaults like I did for the Jerry account. And apply. All right, so let's come back up here now to, now that we've got our users created, we've got Jerry and Joe, let's come back up here to shared folders. And I'll just show you real quickly how to create a shared folder. Right now I have two folders. I have one called applications and one called videos. And the applications folder is where I put things like you know install applications for word or excel or office or whatever other applications that the client might use i just find it's easier to put download the applications one time put them in a central location and then i've got some videos i'm going to be sharing on this network as well so i created a folder there so let's now create a folder and go ahead and do one for music so i'll just come up here to create and we'll just call it music if I if my dyslexia doesn't strike and I'm just gonna call it shared music it's good to give these a description don't you know don't skip the steps give it a description how long does it take now we've created our volume in a previous video you should know how to create a volume under Synology if you don't go back and check some of my previous videos but we're gonna create a folder called music and it's called shared music we're also going to enable the recycle bin, so if somebody were to delete something off there by mistake, we could come back and get the file up, uh, file back. We're also going to restrict access to the administrators only on that recycle bin. Just click on Next. We could also encrypt. Uh, you know, a lot of servers have the ability to encrypt the entire drive, but with Synology, you can encrypt the individual folders. But you notice down here, you'll you'll have to set up a key manager in order to do that. That's an advanced topic. We're not going to worry about it right now. We'll just click on Next. We can enable uh, data checksum for ad advanced data uh, integrity. Uh, with file self-healing and file system scrubbing, you're available to ensure data integrity as well. We're going to ignore that for now. We could also do a shared folder quota. So if we have a limited amount of space on our network, we could say, hey, limit it to 200 or 300 gig and, you know, whatever. Uh, we're not going to use that either. Click on Next. Verify these values, click on Apply, and now you've created a shared folder. Uh, now it's asking you what permissions you want to give that person or these people on your network. 
So by default, the admin the admin users get read write privileges, even though the admin account is disabled, it still gets read write privileges. So I'm going to go ahead and give Jerry read only privileges. So I just click that box, and for Joe, I'm going to give him read write. So Jerry will only be able to read files off this network location, but Joe will be able to read and write, and that includes deleting the files. Click on OK, and there you go. So now we have our three shares set up. All right, so we'll start with our Windows 7 machine. I've got it set up. I've set up a Windows 7 virtual machine and a Windows 10 virtual machine here on my Hyper-V server, just so I can show you how they, uh, how they work and interact with Synology. So we'll start with our Windows 7 Pro virtual machine. So go ahead and connect to it and fire that machine up. So we'll click on the little start button here. Let the virtual machine boot up. Now keep in mind we're going to be setting these up in just a work group network, not a domain. So the setup is going to be a little bit different for a non-domain uh, machine than it would be for a domain machine. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, huh? All right, so here we go. we got Windows 7 set up or loaded. And uh, right down here, you can see we've got a, uh, <clears throat> a nice little icon that tells us the status of our network. Uh, so what I'm going to do is right-click on that, go to Open Network and Sharing Center, and go to Change Adapter Settings, and then I'm going to right-click on this and get a status and details. So as you can see, we are getting an IP address of 20.55. It's got the correct gateway in here, 20.254. It's got our DHCP server in here, it's 20.1, and we can see it has also populated our DNS server settings. So we're good there. Now just to verify that, this machine name is called Win7 or W7 Pro or W7P-VM-001. So if we're to come over to our Synology NAS, into Control Panel and DHCP server, I can come down here into this LAN 5, which is where our DHCP server is set up. Go to Edit. And if we go to DHCP Clients, now we can see that uh, the Win7P-VM-001 with this MAC address has indeed been given an IP address of 20.55. Now, the nice thing about Synology is, is if you wanted to just reserve this IP address, you could click this little lock button, and it would reserve it so that that, ver that MAC address would always get the same IP address every time. That can come in handy for things like printers and you know other devices that don't change often on your network. So if we come back now to our virtual machine, we'll see that it is indeed ready to go. It is connected to the network. It hasn't been activated or anything, but it is indeed ready to go. So let's just verify we have internet connectivity and it looks like we do. So if we go to entertainment here, there we go. We can see we're indeed getting out to the network. Now what I want to do is set up a user on this machine so that we can actually log into the Synology NAS and we can use uh, the some of the applications on there and we can do our so we can do our drive mappings. So as you can see, we don't have any drive letters mapped. So the first thing we need to do is create a user on this unit that matches the user we created on the Synology NAS so that they can be authenticated on the Synology NAS and we can do drive letter mappings. So since I'm already here under the computer, if I just right click and go to manage, that'll bring up the management interface here. Now I'm going to give you the w I'm going to tell you the way I set up users on Windows 7 and Windows 10 for local users in a non-domain environment. It may not be best practices, but it's the way I like to do it. So the first thing you want to do is come out of here under users. And as you can see, I've already created a user called Jerry. So if I double click on that, I put his name in here. I put the description and yes, he is an asshole. So that is correct. I also put on here password never expires. You can change user, cannot change password if you want to. But what's really important is here under member of, keep in mind you're dealing with this user on this local machine. 
So I make sure I make this user a member of the administrators group as well as the users group. Why? Well, if you want this user to be able to install applications and that kind of thing, they're going to need admin privileges. Now you can skip this step, but this user is going to be calling you every time they need something installed or something that needs admin privileges, and you're going to have to be available to make those changes. So if you're not real concerned about the user being able to, you know, in a small mom and pop operation, you usually don't need to uh, be too concerned about that. Your mileage might vary, but it's just a practice I use. I always set up the user as a member of the administrators group just to make my life a little bit easier. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add another user. So I just right click here and do new user and we're going to add Joe. And Joe is the primary asshole. So give it a super secret password and we'll just set it to password never expires create and close so now we've created Joe there as well so now we can go out here to the member tab and add Joe as a member uh, of administrators check the name so win7p-vm-001 he'll now be a member of that administrators group on that local machine so there you go now let's try and uh, let's try and see if that worked. Let's uh, let's actually log off, and we'll try the Jerry account first. So there's Jerry's account. There's Joe's account. So we'll try the Jerry account first. <clears throat> now this is not the first time Jerry's been logged in on this account. I'll show you what happens when we log on as Joe. Now we're also getting an error message because we've been using this machine before to connect to file shares. So let me make sure those file shares are disconnected. There we go. So now I want to actually connect to the Synology NAS. So I can come out here to the File Explorer and up here in the address bar just do a double backslash and the name of the flash station or FS1018 I think is what we called it, right? Yes. So I entered the name in with a double backslash and you can see the three shares I have available. Now, I like to map drive letters. I just think it makes my life easier. So I'm going to go ahead and map some drive letters. So I'm going to right click on applications. And I'm going to map that to drive letter Z and I'm going to tell it reconnect it log on. Now you're going to notice here it asks me for a network password to connect to FS1018. So let's try to enter this here. It should have entered that automatically, but Nope, it does not allow me to log on. So why does it not allow me to log on? Well, if you remember, I told you we'd come back and apply permissions later. We never did that. So it just goes to show you the Synology is doing its job. Since I didn't give Jerry permissions to any of these folders or shares, uh, he, can't, he can't use them, and with the exception of music. Because remember when we created the music share, that I gave Jerry access. So if we right click on that, we can map a network drive and we can map that to drive letter M, tell it to reconnect it, log in, and that works just fine. But remember, he has not been given access to either the applications or the video share. So let's go fix that. So we're back on the Synology NAS and let's come up here to control panel and shared folders. And let's go ahead and edit the applications share and go over to the permissions tab and as you can see right here Jerry and Joe both have no access well I want Jerry to be able to read the files in this folder so I'm going to set his permission to read only and then Joe I'm going to give him access to read write so he can actually save files delete manage the folders and directories and keep them organized click OK now we need to do the same thing with music, even though we've already given Jerry access. Let's make sure that Joe has access as well. So Jerry has read only, Joe has read write. That's okay. And the same way with the video share, let's go to edit. Let's go to permissions. Let's give Jerry the ability to read and Joe the ability to read and write and click okay. 
Now let's go back to our workstation and see what kind of effect that had. All right, so we're back on our Windows 7 machine, and now let's see if we can map the applications to drive letter Z. And bingo, it works. Same way with our video. We'll go ahead and map a drive letter to that. We'll do drive letter V for video right here. Reconnect it, login, and now I now Jerry has access to these files and folders. Now, can Jerry delete anything? I don't know. Let's try. Let's go out and delete the scratch folder. Tell it, it looks like he does. So tell it yes. And it says no. Denied. You require permission from FS1018 Adama to make changes to this folder. So he has read-only access. He can't delete anything. And by virtue of can't delete, he can't also create new folders. So if I were to try to create a new folder, it says I don't have permission to do that. Same way with the application share. If we come under here now, try to create a new folder. No bueno. However, under music, he does have rewrite privileges. So he can create a new folder. No, he doesn't. I didn't give him read write on that either. I'm a bad boy. So he can read, but he can't write. So the basic setup for Jerry is now done. But let's try that with Joe and see what happens. All right, so let's try the Joe account. So I'm just going to come in here to the virtual machine, log off. And let's try to log on as Joe. And uh, now keep in mind, Joe's never logged on to this machine before. So it's going to go out and set up his desktop and all of his permissions and all that the first time. As you can see here, it's telling you it's or telling us it's preparing the desktop. So once that's done, then we'll be able to go out and do our drive letter mapping. And then we can test our permissions and see what effect they've had. All right, so we're at the desktop now. So if we, uh, hopefully we'll let it stabilize. Yes, so we'll come here to File Explorer. Come up here to the address bar and enter a double backslash fs-1018 because that is the name of our file server. And so now you'll see we have the same three shares that we saw under Jerry. So let's do our drive letter mappings. We right click under applications and let's map a network drive to drive letter Z. Reconnect. Oh, that's good. Same way with music. Right click, map a drive letter. Drive letter M. Reconnect it. Log on bang and then the same way with video map a network drive drive letter v reconnect it log on bang beautiful now let's go out to the scratch folder and see if we can delete anything under here so let's uh let's delete this one and yep it worked worked like a charm so this user joe has full access to all of these shared folders that's why i'm able to delete and i'm able to create right same way with the applications and the video so all is well all is well indeed all right so we got our windows 7 machine set up so let's go play with windows 10. so we'll double click on this here and then we'll click on the start button all right, so let's get our Windows 10 machine set up on our Synology NAS. So I'm just going to log in here as Adama. And we need to go out and make some changes here now. First thing we want to do is make sure we're getting an IP address from our DHCP server. So I'm just going to come down here, right click on the network icon, open network and internet settings. And then I'm going to come to uh, view your network properties. And if you look right here, we'll see it is connected to our DHCP server at 10 gig. It lists the correct DNA, or DHCP server is 20.1. Uh, our IP address is 20.54. Here's our DNS servers and our domain name, suffix, etc. So all of that looks correct. Now, the next thing we need to do is create a user, uh, a couple of users, under Windows 10. And it's a little bit different than we did under Windows 7. But basically, click on File Manager, and then you'll, you'll have an option to come to this PC. Right-click and go to Manage. It's very similar to how we did under Windows 7, but 
I don't know why Windows has to, you know, Windows 10, they want to make it a little more complicated. But they do. Okay, so again, come to local users and groups, and then come down here to users. So the first user we'll create is Jerry. Give it a description and enter our super secret password. And remember, this password has to match the password you created for the user on the Synology and Azure. This is not going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to password never expires. I'm going to create. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the user Joe as well. So we've got him created. You know, I know a lot of people would argue with that description, but trust me, I know what I'm saying. I know what it is that I'm saying there. Password never expires, create and close. Now, I want to go back into both of these and give both of these users admin access on the local machine. But there's two users, and rather than going into each user and adding them to the group, I'll just come to the group administrators and I'll add them here so we'll do Jerry and then we'll do Joe so it's just an easier way to do it if you've got multiple ones to do and then apply and okay so now that we've created the users let's go ahead and log out and we'll sign in as first Jerry and then we'll sign in as Joe so do Jerry and your password now I'm using Windows 10 Pro to do this you can use Windows 10 home you'll be able to log in the same way uh, however you keep in mind that if you're gonna use a domain controller at any point in the future uh, you won't be able to use Windows 10 home you'll be able to connect to it but you won't be able to be authenticated so always in a business environment if they're running Windows 10 home uh, advise them to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. It's only 99 bucks and it's money well spent. So it is now creating a desktop for Jerry. And of course, we're going to turn all these things off. It, I don't really think it makes any damn difference. They're still collecting telemetry data on you, but at least it makes you feel good to click those little buttons. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go to File Manager, and we're going to map our drives. So come up here to the address bar, double backslash fs-1018, because that is the name of our server. And it found the shares, so we'll go ahead and map them. So we'll map the Applications folder to drive letter Z and tell it to reconnect. And it did. That would do the music share. Drive letter M. I clicked the wrong button. Sorry about that. Should be able to see it again. Yep, even even I make boo-boos. And we're going to map the uh, V drive to the video. You know, video killed the radio star. I don't know if you knew that or not. thought I'd share that with you. Uh, and you see it takes a bit longer after you map a drive letter for it to come up under Windows 10 than Windows 7 Pro. I don't know why that is. All right, so now we've got Jerry set up, and he's got his drive letter mappings under this PC, and he should be able to access it, and he can. Can he delete a folder? Yes. Delete it? No, he has no authorization. Let's cancel on that. All right, let's go ahead and get log him out, and let's get Joe set up and make sure his is working as well. You see why I like to use virtual machines while, <clears throat> while I'm doing these labs. It just just makes it much easier to play around with stuff and show you how it's working. And frankly, man, Hyper-V just works. That's why I like it so well. Now, these virtual machines are currently running on spinning rust. So 
they'll be a little bit slower than if they were running off of an SSD or or off of shared storage on the network, that kind of thing. But uh, you can still see it's very acceptable uh, performance that we're getting on Windows 10. All right, so just like we did with Jerry, let's go back out to this PC and uh, double cl double backslash fs-1018 is the name of our server and let's get our drive letters mapped drive letter z reconnect drive letter m map that to drive letter m our music map that to drive letter m i should say and our video map network drive and V, oop, nope, I didn't want to do that to the Y drive. I want to do that to the M drive, or to the V drive. Sorry about that. I got a little click happy. And again, it takes a second for that drive letter mapping to come up. Don't know why, but it just does. All right, so if we go to this PC now, we should see our M, V, and Z drive. Let's go to music and see if we can delete that test folder now and voila we can so now we have jerry and joe set up both on our windows 7 and our windows 10 machines so there you go youtube we're going to end this video here for now and when we come back in the next video we're going to do some more advanced functionality but these are the you can see setting up a basic network whether it's for your home or even for a simple you know 10 user network client network it's very simple using synology and windows uh, we may show you how to set up a Linux machine. It's a little more convoluted to get a Linux machine to connect up to a network, but uh, maybe we'll spin a, a VM up and, and do that. I can't say for sure, but, you know, I'm a Windows guy, so I'm kind of focusing on Windows here for this setup procedure. Now, in our next videos, we're going to start doing some more advanced features, showing you some of the applications available under Synology and how you can use them as a replacement to the Office Suite. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but Synology has a full-blown mail server built into it, DHCP, DNS, all kinds of stuff, web hosting server. So we'll start taking little bits of that and showing you how to set it up. But if you're just setting up a basic home or, or client network, these are, these are the steps that ought to get you started, uh, you know, and you'll, you'll have a good, you'll have a good uh, understanding of how the network is set up and how to set up your shares under Synology. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal. We take Patreon. And we have more videos coming up in the Synology series. While we got this flash station here, I wanted to make the most of it and show you how to do, uh, you know, how to, how to set up a basic network. Uh, and that's what we've done in this first part of these series of videos. So please don't forget to come back and see us again. And don't forget that we will see you on the other side.